Section four, the escape from darkness. The escape from darkness involves two stages. First, the recognition that darkness cannot hide. This step usually entails fear. Second, the recognition that there is nothing you want to hide, even if you could. This step brings escape from fear. When you have become willing to hide nothing, you will not only be willing to enter into communion, but will also understand peace and joy. Two, holiness can never be really hidden in darkness, but you can deceive yourself about it. This deception makes you fearful because you realize in your heart it is a deception and you exert enormous efforts to establish its reality. The miracle sets reality where it belongs. Reality belongs only to spirit and the miracle acknowledges only truth. It thus dispels illusions about yourself and puts you in communion with yourself and God. The miracle joins in the atonement by placing the mind in the service of the Holy Spirit. This establishes the proper function of the mind and corrects its errors, which are merely lacks of love. Your mind can be possessed by illusions, but spirit is eternally free. If a mind perceives without love, it perceives an empty shell and is unaware of the spirit within, but the atonement restores spirit to its proper place. The mind that serves spirit is invulnerable. Three, darkness is lack of light as sin is lack of love. It has no unique properties of its own. It is an example of the scarcity belief from which only error can proceed. Truth is always abundant. Those who perceive and acknowledge that they have everything have no needs of any kind. The purpose of the atonement is to restore everything to you or rather to restore it to your awareness. You were given everything when you were created, just as everyone was. Four, the emptiness engendered by fear must be replaced by forgiveness. That is what the Bible means by there is no death and why I could demonstrate that death does not exist. I came to fulfill the law by reinterpreting it. The law itself, if properly understood, offers only protection. It is those who have not yet changed their minds who brought the hellfire concept into it. I assure you that I will witness for anyone who lets me, and to whatever extent he permits it, your witnessing demonstrates your belief and thus strengthens it. Those who witness for me are expressing through their miracles that they have abandoned the belief in deprivation in favor of the abundance that they have learned belongs to them. Section 5. Wholeness and Spirit. 1. The miracle is much like the body in that both are learning aids for facilitating a state in which they become unnecessary. When spirit's original state of direct communication is reached, neither the body nor the miracle serves any purpose. While you believe you are in a body, however, you can choose between loveless and miraculous channels of expression. You can make an empty shell, but you cannot express nothing at all. You can wait, delay, paralyze yourself, or reduce your creativity almost to nothing, but you cannot abolish it. You can destroy your medium of communication, but not your potential. You did not create yourself. Two, the basic decision of the miracle-minded is not to wait on time any longer than is necessary. Time can waste as well as be wasted. The miracle worker therefore accepts the time control factor gladly. He recognizes that every collapse of time brings everyone closer to the ultimate release from time in which the son and the father are one. Equality does not imply equality now. When everyone recognizes that he has everything, individual contributions to the sonship will no longer be necessary. Three, when the atonement has been completed, all talents will be shared by all the sons of God. God is not partial. All his children have his total love, and all his gifts are freely given to everyone alike. Except ye become as little children means that unless you fully recognize your complete dependence on God, you cannot know the real power of the Son in his true relationship with the Father. The specialness of God's sons does not stem from exclusion but inclusion. All my brothers are special. If you believe they are deprived of anything, their perception becomes distorted. 
When this occurs, the whole family of God or the sonship is impaired in its relationships. Four, ultimately, every member of the family of God must return. The miracle calls him to return because it blesses and honors him, even though he may be absent in spirit. God is not mocked. It's not a warning, but a reassurance. God would be mocked if any of his creations lacked holiness. The creation is whole, and the mark of wholeness is holiness. Miracles are affirmations of sonship, which is a state of completion and abundance. 5. Whatever is true is eternal and cannot change or be changed. Spirit is therefore unalterable because it is already perfect, but the mind can elect what it chooses to serve. The only limit put on its choice is that it cannot serve two masters. If it elects to do so, the mind can become the medium by which spirit creates along the lines of its own creation. If it does not freely elect to do so, it retains its creative potential but places itself under tyrannous rather than authoritative control. As a result, it imprisons because such are the dictates of tyrants. To change your mind means to place it at the disposal of true authority. Six, the miracle is a sign that the mind has chosen to be led by me in Christ's service. The abundance of Christ is the natural result of choosing to follow him. All shallow roots must be uprooted because they are not deep enough to sustain you. The illusion that shallow roots can be deepened and thus made to whole is one of the, the distortions on which the reverse of the golden rule rests. As these false underpinnings are given up, the equilibrium is temporarily experienced as unstable. However, nothing is less stable than an upside-down orientation. Nor can anything that holds its upside-down be conducive to increased stability. Section 6. The Illusion of Needs 1. You who want peace can find it only by complete forgiveness. No learning is acquired by anyone unless he wants to learn it and believes in some way that he needs it. While lack does not exist in the creation of God, it is very apparent in what you have made. It is in fact the essential difference between the two. Lack implies that you would be better off in a state somehow different from the one you're in. Until the separation, which is the meaning of the fall, nothing was lacking. There were no needs at all. Needs arise only when you deprive yourself. You act according to the particular order of needs you establish. This in turn depends on your perception of what you are. Two, a sense of separation from God is the only lack you really need correct. This, this sense of separation would never have arisen if you had not distorted your perception of truth and had thus perceived yourself as lacking. The idea of order of needs arose because, having made this fundamental error, you had already fragmented yourself into levels with different needs. As you integrate, you become one and your needs become one accordingly. Unified needs lead to unified action because this produces a lack of conflict. Three, the idea of orders of need, which follows from the original error that one can be separated from God, requires correction at its only level before the error of perceiving levels at all can be corrected. You cannot behave effectively while you function on different levels. However, while you do, Correction must be introduced vertically from the bottom up. This is because you think you live in space where concepts such as up and down are meaningful. Ultimately, space is as meaningless as time. Both are merely beliefs. Four, the real purpose of this world is to use it to correct your unbelief. You can never control the effects of fear yourself because you made fear and you believe in what you made. An attitude then Though not in content, you resemble your creator, who has perfect faith in his creations because he created them. Belief produces the acceptance of existence. That is why you can believe what no one else thinks to be true. It is true to you because it was made by you. Five, 
All aspects of fear are untrue because they do not exist at the creative level and therefore do not exist at all. To whatever extent you are willing to submit your beliefs to this test, to that extent are your perceptions corrected. In sorting out the false from the true, the miracle proceeds along these lines. Perfect love casts out fear. If fear exists, then there is not perfect love. But only perfect love exists. If there is fear, it produces a state that does not exist. Believe this and you will be free. Only God can establish this solution. And his faith is his gift. Section 7. Distortions of Miracle Impulses. 1. Your distorted perceptions produce a dense cover over miracle impulses, making it hard for them to reach your own awareness. The confusion of miracle impulses with physical impulses is a major perceptual distortion. Physical impulses are misdirected miracle impulses. All real pleasures come from doing God's will. This is because not doing it is a denial of self. Denial of self results in illusions, while correction of the error brings release from it. Do not deceive yourself into believing that you can relate in peace to God or to your brothers with anything external. 2. Child of God, you were created to create the good, the beautiful, and the holy. Do not forget this. The love of God for a little while must still be expressed through one body to another because vision is still dim. You can use your body best to help you enlarge your perception so you can achieve real vision of which the physical lie is incapable. Learning to do this is the body's only true usefulness. 3. Fantasy is a distorted form of vision. Fantasies of any kind are distortions because they always involve twisting perception into unreality. Actions that stem from distortions are literally the reactions of those who know not what they do. Fantasy is an attempt to control reality according to false needs. Twist reality in any way and you are perceiving destructively. Fantasies are a means of making false associations and attempting to obtain pleasure from them. But although you can perceive false associations, you can never make them real except to yourself. You believe in what you make. If you offer miracles, you will be equally strong in your belief in them. The strength of your conviction will then sustain the belief of the miracle receiver. Fantasies become totally unnecessary as the wholly satisfying nature of reality becomes apparent to both the giver and the receiver. Reality is lost through usurpation which produces tyranny. As long as a single slave remains to walk the earth, your release is not complete. Complete restoration of the sonship is the only goal of the miracle-minded. Four, this is a course in mind training. All learning involves attention and study at some level. Some of the later parts of the course rest too heavily on these earlier sections, not to require that careful study. You will also need them for preparation. Without this, you may become much too fearful of what is to come to make constructive use of it. However, as you study these earlier sections, you will begin to see some of the implications that will be amplified later on. 5. A solid foundation is necessary because of the confusion between fear and awe, to which I have already referred and which is often made. I have said that awe is inappropriate in connection with the sons of God because you should not experience awe in the presence of your equals. However, it was also emphasized that awe is proper in the presence of your creator. I have been careful to clarify my role in the atonement without either over or understating it. I am also trying to do the same with yours. I have stressed that awe is not an appropriate reaction to me because of our inherent equality. Some of the later steps in this course, however, involve a more direct approach to God himself. It would be unwise to start on these steps without careful preparation, or all will be confused with fear, and the experience will be more traumatic than beatific. Healing is of God in the end. The means are being carefully explained to you. Revelation may occasionally reveal the end to you, but to reach it, the means are needed.